go. Hi, everybody. It's Agnes, and welcome to another interview. Today it is with Anne. Hello, Anne. Hey, Agnes. So nice to meet you in person. I can't tell you how delighted I am. Uh, likewise, because you and I have had a few, well, quite a few emails back and forth. So it's lovely to catch up face to face online. And um, just so the viewers know, will you tell them where you are in the world? I live actually in National City, which is a little town, little city, 10 miles south of San Diego in California. Yeah. Um, and um, I live at, a, at the Sweetwater Zen Center. Um, we have um, 12 cottages here, and I rent one of them. And um, you said you were kind of curious about the Zen Center. What would you like to know? <laughs> Well, this conversation started when I started talking about Kaizen and then you emailed yeah. me and said, I'm actually living in a Zen center. I mean, for those people that know nothing about Zen and nothing about Zen centers, can you tell us the basics of what it's like to live there and about, you know, meditation, being in a group, whatever you like? Well, the, re the reason I came here, I, I, um, you can tell I'm not 20 or 30 anymore. Uh, and I had spent part of my rather interesting life was I spent 16 years living in a community on boats in a low-income housing community on boats uh, north of San Francisco and that was just a hoot and when I left there and came back San Diego is San Diego County is my original home and my first grandchild was born and I fell in love at a level I didn't know was possible so I moved back down here and I really miss being in community because, because uh, your people are dedicated to some idea in common and, you, and there's a lot of support. There's also a lot of the typical squabbling in any family. Uh, so it's, it's both things. But then I saw an ad on Craigslist for live in spiritual community and I had just begun to meditate. Uh, and so I came down here and met Herb Deer, who was running the place at the time. He, he was managing the property and rented, rented a two-bedroom, which is, we have a choice. So you get either a single room or a two-bedroom cottage. These buildings here are 100 years old. Okay. Um, and um, can you hear the cat in the background? That's Dudley, <laughs> and who thinks he needs more to eat. Uh, and I may get up and feed him. We'll see. And I began to sit. I didn't know anything much about Zen. That's not true. I'd been drawn to Buddhism for since I was 10 years old, off and on. But I hadn't figured out meditation. I had been doing it, been been doing it wrong. And I'm going to walk out and give Dudley food so he'll quit yelling at us. Okay, I'll put this. I'll, pa I'll pause this for a minute. So okay. do what okay. you got to do. Go on. And so I I had been trying to meditate for years and had. And I had the illusion or the misinformation that I should be able to sit down and keep my mind clear for 20 or 30 minutes. And uh, that obviously didn't work. Uh, and I would try and it wouldn't work and I'd get disturbed and it quit. And then <clears throat> I was part of a church of religious science congregation and the minister ran a class on meditation. And I went, and he had, he invited us to sit, to read something spiritual, whatever that means to us, and to sit, and that when our mind went off to worry about lunch or the bills or anything but what our object of meditation, what I now know is the object of meditation, just keep coming back to to the thought or the mantra or the candle or the, or the breath. It's where Zen, our branch of Zen, starts people out with the breath. Uh, you do that very well in your meditations. Um, and we tend to count either one, two, in and out, or more, up to ten, and then start over again. And one of the great things about the breath is it's always with us. You know, I can always, if I remember, come back to the breath wherever I am, whatever I think is going on around me or that I'm scared about. I can do it on the bus. I can do it in a car. I can do it in the middle of a, a crowd. And the breath is always with me. So that's basically, and Zen has, um, Soto Zen, S-O-T-O, has a pretty deep understanding that meditation is one way to deal with 
the unconscious and to get to know ourselves at a deep level. So that's kind of the approach I've taken, and um, I've, I've adopted that pr approach. Right now, I'm not meditating with the group as much as I'm doing the Law of Attraction meditation jurors and uh, some of Abraham Hicks and also mm. Joe Dispenza, Dr. Joe Dispenza. Yeah. And then I just found, who's the guy who reads Neville Goddard so well? Uh, can't uh, remember. Josiah? Josiah? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I've just found him, and I love his voice. Me too. And I find that meditation, sitting by myself and listening to a video, or even going out and watering the garden by hand, is a very special meditative space for me that right now is great. So there are a jillion ways to meditate. Yeah. Um, that the secret to me was getting over this notion that I had to keep my mind clear mm. and that the secret to come back to whatever you're come. If you have, I heard a monk say one time, if you have to come back 10,000 times, it's a good meditation. <laughs> and I like that. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yes. I went, oh, okay. I can do that. You yeah. Know? So, I loved, I was looking at um, our emails and um, you had said, and I loved how you worded this. Um, you said, "My, we can talk about um, the Zen Center and maybe my big misunderstanding of meditation." <laughs> Which yeah, I'm that was it. You worded that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was it was such a revelation that all I had to do, that I did that uh, somebody must somebody told me years ago that you're supposed to have your mind blank like a yeah. a TV that's turned off. I've never read that any place, nor has any other person ever told me that. And I was so relieved when, when uh, the minister said, "You just keep coming back." Yeah. Uh, and then I moved into Zen, uh, and um, the, the center. The center is we've got we've got about twenty four people living here. Okay. I often join the group for meditation because it's easier to meditate in a group. Yeah. Um, <laughs> There's something about riding that energy that's very sweet. Yeah. And there's something about working together, which we do, the gardens and stuff. We all have our own jobs and our own lives, but in our own kitchens, you know, we're not living. Yeah. We're not. It, it's an ideal situation for somebody like me who's single at the moment. And I think it would work if I, when my special person finally joins me or I join him, um, because he's also inclined toward Buddhism. And that's part of the magic <laughs> yeah uh, and uh, so I just wrote an essay I have a I have a, a blog about freelance writing called about freelance writing.com and I just wrote an essay um, I I think I told you I cut my finger yeah five stitches I'm 76 years old first stitches I've ever had in my life uh. and then and, and I told I'm typing with nine fingers which is just the pitch <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yes. And somebody wrote in and said how much trouble they were having with their health. And so I wrote an essay on how I stay healthy, which is mostly my mental attitude. Yep. And um, um, so I'm getting gutsier about what I write on that blog because I don't know. This med and, I, and meditation is, is, I think, was the first or second thing I, me I mentioned in that list. Uh, Fantastic. It helps me with the writing. We'll it helps me with that. It. And we'll put a link to that okay. blog down below. Yeah. Okay, I'll send you the link to it mm -hmm. so that you have the specific article. And, yep. uh, great. I uh, love the traffic. Uh, yep. Um, yeah. And uh, so, and I also coach. I, you, I think you know that. Yeah. That I coach. And um, um, that's a hoot, too. I mean, I started coaching writing because I've been writing long enough to have learned a few things. Yeah. And to be able to help. And then somebody said, well, have you ever considered life coaching? And I said, well, I do it all the time. I just call it writing coaching, you know. Yeah. And, and now I'm about to launch a group coaching deal. Fantastic. Um, so, so that's exciting. Yeah. What kind of coaching do you do? Like what's your, your specialty? I hate to say it this way because I know exactly what you're asking me, but Pretty much anything anybody wants to bring to the table has worked really well. Yeah. Uh, in my first year, uh, my my second client wanted to know how to deal with bunch grass, and I said, "What's bunch grass?" 
I was going to ask and you she, that too. <laughs> and I'm madly googling bunch grasses, you know. <laughs> and she had a uh, she has a little farm up in Oregon, and it's a particularly nasty weed that is really hard to dig up and tends to take over. And uh, I said, Ellie, I don't know anything about bunch grass. And then I said, but I did say, tell me more about what's going on. And she's, I know, she actually probably is the one first person who ever talked to me about law of attraction long, long ago. And so I said, what do you believe about bunch grass? <laughs> yeah. And by the time we got finished, both of us were utterly amazed that because of that conversation, she had her attitude toward bunch grass, which I still have never seen. I uh, wouldn't know it if it walked in the door. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but her attitude had changed, and she'd come up with some new ideas about how to address it. And that's so my specialty, I think, would be called, I can help you figure out what you already know that you're hiding from yourself or what you really want. Mm. Because the, what what happened was I was able to help her open up so she could see she had more solutions. They certainly weren't my solutions. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I, I that's what, that's, that seems I have a talent with that that I get out of I ask the right questions somehow and get out of the way yeah so yeah uh, the group coaching will be a, a, a new experience and I'll send you the link to the my coaching site too if you okay want. yeah for sure and um, uh, and but I think it's um, I, I'm titling it uh, what do you want with your career in your life now yeah. What do you really want with your career and your life now? Yeah. Uh, because what we want, it's, to some degree, is always changing. Yep. And the, and if I'm not if I'm not alert, I can find myself really stuck in doing what I used to do because it's easy and familiar. Instead yeah. of breaking loose, and who knows what will happen? It's bound to be more fun. Yeah. So that's. Um, yeah, it's true. So, and the other thing. It is always changing. It is always changing. I agree with you. What yeah. you wanted in your twenties and your thirties and your forties and your fifties, it changes. It does. Yeah, yeah. Some there's some common themes apparently, but um, but it does change. And I'm I'm probably I'm probably I'm not moving away from writing. That seems to be inborn. Um, but I want to write in different arenas. So that's beginning to evolve pretty naturally. I don't know, so. Have you always been a creative person? Uh, yeah, actually, I have. I for a long time I didn't know I was. Yeah. Uh, I had I had a, a false idea about medita meditation, false idea about creativity as well. <laughs> come to think about it, because uh, I thought you had to have totally original thoughts. Yeah. Instead of simply building on the, you know, standing on the shoulders of others, and uh, uh, I, re I, you know, so yeah, totally. I've had I've had lots of wrong ideas that I've gotten over, and uh, yes, uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Isn't that doesn't that come with age and experience? You realize how confidently wrong you've been so often. <laughs> Well, and the other thing, the thing, I, there are lots of things I love about being older, and one of them is I no longer mind when I'm wrong. Yeah. I just, it just isn't important anymore whether I'm right or wrong, almost mm. always. I, I get stuck, but I can get off it real quick, too. Yeah. And it's just, uh, it's like, okay, I, and nor do I care if I, if, I, I, in fact, I actually delight when I run into something I don't know to go and go learn it. Um, and, uh, I have much more freedom to, I'm so less judgmental of myself as I've gotten older. I'm so much more accepting Yeah. of the good, bad, and the indifferent, you know. Um, yeah. So, and that's fun. I like that. that. Is, yeah, that's a nice, that's just a, just a softer, well, it's like part of self-love too, isn't it? I guess it is, come to think about it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it is. It's, yeah. 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 So, I, see, I just see a lot and, you know, like people are promoting, you know, the master class or I'm an expert in this. And I think, you know, like the older I get, the more I realize how much of a student I will be till the day I die. I will never put that label, I'm a master or I'm an expert. It's like, you know, 
after 30 years of reading Neville, I feel like I'm only just beginning to really apply the depth of what he's saying. Like it's taken years to, to get in my head what he's talking about, then get it in my heart, then put it into practice. Well, and he's not easy. He's not. I, I have just started reading Neville. I have, I own, um, what is it? The, uh, Blonde the Promise. Yes. Um, and which I then dis- I bought it from Abe's Books, and then I discovered I could have downloaded it. But I, I, I like having the paper book. Yeah. There's an old idea. I love having paper books. So, Me too. Uh, I probably won't. Yeah. But he's not easy. No. Uh, and I, I don't know how many times I'm going to have to read this. Yeah. Uh, to begin, I mean, I catch glimmers, but uh, and you're, I've heard you talk particularly. With, the ones when you're talking with Dan, San Diego Dan, or radio yeah. style Dan. Yep. But, um, I share his respect of you and what you've learned from Neville. Uh, because I've gotten far enough to discover this isn't easy. And wow. I love it when somebody reads it to me. The particular, you know. Yeah. That's, that's just great. And uh, so, good. Yeah. How did you discover him? Uh, a friend of mine... I was really struggling in my marriage and she had given me my very first book, which was Florence Scovel Shin, The Game of Life. Mm, and, the, it, yeah. and the book that you just showed us there, The Law and the Promise by Neville, was the second book she gave me. So, was it? And that was yeah. my first introduction to Neville and it was in the 1990s. And we weren't watching YouTube then. So we'd go and buy Neville and highlight them. And, and I'm like mm-hmm. you, and I love a book. I, I don't want to read stuff like that online. I like the book. I like the smell. I like the feel. So that book, I remember I was suffering so badly. I couldn't sleep or eat because my marriage was falling apart. And my husband was having an affair and, you know, all sorts of crap was going on in my in love life. And I would read this book and I would, I would literally transform from being in excruciating pain and not being able to breathe and sleep. And I'd be crying all the time to getting this real lift from reading those stories in that book that you're reading right now. And it is still above and beyond my favorite Neville Neville book of all time. Uh, That's interesting because I I suspect you mentioned it and I went off and bought it because you mentioned it. I'm not sure. Somebody else may have, but you're the one who talks about Neville the most. Yeah. Um, the people I watch. I mean, I started out with uh, Abraham Hicks. Yep. And I still go back to them, but I'm. Um, there's a lot to be learned from a whole bunch of people. Yes. You know, it doesn't yes. have to be only one source. I agree. I agree. And I'm. I trust, I trust myself. I mean, there's some people that I've started to listen to who know this is not right for me, or at least it's not right now. Yeah, and I trust myself to be discerning enough to find the people that mm. uh, I have. I have a coaching friend, a woman who's a little younger than I am, um, who doesn't agree with me. She thinks people should stick with one teacher. Yeah, and so, uh, but we we still love each other. I mean, it's just it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't and, matter. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm a bit. Um, <laughs> I mean, I really love Neville, but I like you. I, Abraham Hicks did a lot for me and I still go back to her yeah. and I, and that whole thing of my way is the only way or this person's right and everyone else is wrong. That's yeah, even, idea. yeah. I don't like that whole ideology. I like to be like you say, open and have a listen and then you decide. Yeah. 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 And that the, the teaching I've done either in person or in writing, uh, I started the writing blog of uh, the long story, but I have learned, I, I will call myself an expert in certain kinds of freelance writing. Yeah. Um, but I'm not the only expert out there. And just because I say so doesn't make it true for you, even though I call myself an expert. So I'm, that's, uh, uh, I do, I was surprised when I realized, I don't know, probably 10, 10, when I started the coaching on the writing, I was going, boy, Ann, you know, you've learned a lot. And then, oh, maybe you could help people by coaching them. You know, that was yeah. how I made the yeah. That was how I made the connection, and uh, and then that turned out to be a lot of fun. And yeah, uh, so, and and less work than in some ways than writing. Uh, 
because it's just you just talk, you know, and uh, you don't have and to revise you, it. Are you coaching online? Or are you doing face to face? I do. I've done one face to face client, and I do it uh, mostly on the phone. Yeah. Yeah, uh, telephone. And I loved your email coaching, and I thought, oh, okay, I could do that too. I may, you know, I may add that to my repertoire. Uh, the 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 audio. Yeah. The audio. I I don't. I was expecting a regular text email. Yeah. Um, I probably hadn't read your sales stuff too much. I just knew I wanted to to do this, and uh, and it came in as an audio. And I thought, I wonder how this is going to be. And it was great. You know, it's just great. So, uh, yeah. No, that's well. That's brilliant. That's absolutely brilliant. The other thing I want said to you in the email, and this has gotten pretty important to me. Yep. Um, is that when I started this special person stuff? Yep. And I just I, I I fell in love with this guy, and then I got just miserable uh, because I was in love, and I thought about that, and I thought, okay, how, you know, what have you learned? And then I remembered that love's a choice. And you can make a choice. Yeah. And I went, oh, okay, I'll try that. And that has just felt, when I can stay there, this is a choice of mine. I continue to enjoy this this relationship that we do have. Yeah. Uh, and we were, we're colleagues, and we're doing some exciting stuff, and that's, uh, uh, and I fall off that wagon, but I'm getting good at getting back. But when this first happened, I was, and I still do, light up like a candle. You know what a, when, how a woman looks when she falls in love. <laughs> And people were saying, oh, what's going on? And I told them. And I got like, three people who really disapproved really? and told me so. And because they thought he was, um, I don't know what, I don't really, I, one of them, and this, the friendship broke over this, uh, felt I was yeah, too much in love, that it couldn't be real, that I was, uh, and that, and so I still don't know why that matters to to them. Uh, you know, this is my business. This is what yeah. I'm doing. Yeah. Why don't, and fortunately, I've had a couple of people, uh, and now more, but initially who who just listened to me and just said, "Oh, that sounds really interesting. That sounds really exciting." Who never said. Be careful! You got to be careful. You may, you may be. I was doing volunteer work with him, and he's, he's using you, and yet, you know all this stuff. And I'm like, what is that? And I finally realized what I wanted to do with these people. I, when the friendship broke, I was, I, I'm still trying to see if I can get that back because I value, I value that woman in my life. And, um, but I turned to one gal who was kind of ragging on me, and I said, please stop. Yeah. She said, what? <laughs> and I said, I don't want to hear his name come out of your mouth ever again. Yes. Because you're discouraging me from something that is very important to me. Yep. I said, I know you're doing it out of love, but this is too painful. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you just not to do this anymore. Yeah. And she looked really startled. And I was really startled because I hadn't planned this. Yep. Um, and she's honored that. And... There has been some awkwardness, um, a little bit, but basically we've maintained the friendship. And, and I, it's, it was such a lesson to me in if, you, if I'm willing to set boundaries, it, it often works. And if it doesn't work, that works. That's pro work, like in this one broken relationship. Because uh, I discovered she'd been keeping score for years, and I hadn't known that. And I'd still like to repair the relationship. Uh, but... It turned out that I was, we were both misinformed about what the relationship was anyway. Yeah. And uh, uh, so I, when I asked her to quit, she wouldn't. And, uh, but another person has. I've just said, no, this is, don't go there with me. I won't go, and if I bring it up, remind me that I've said I'm not going to, you know. Yep. And uh, I don't know what will happen the first time we show up together, but when I show up with him in, in uh, well, Whatever will happen will happen. It doesn't matter. But yeah. I found it, I just really want to encourage people who, who have naysayers in their life to be willing, not necessarily to always be willing to walk away from the naysayer. I've always said that. But you might try before you walk away just saying, stop that. Mm. Just stop telling me no. 
Yeah. It's not supported. And see yeah. if you can't shift the relationship so you get to keep it. Yeah. And I've been able to keep a couple of friendships. I've lost one and um life is like that, you know. It um, is. It is. And it's all right. You know, some people new people yes. come in, old yeah, people absolutely. go, you know, old friendships sometimes or issues with family members and you don't talk to them that's you know i mean you can revise you can send love but sometimes you know you get to a point where you go i just don't want to spend the energy on that yeah yeah and it's probably best for both yeah i i think i mean, I, I that's i hope that's true I, ch- I choose to believe that 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 it's good for both parties it's you know whether if you're being if you're being even remotely honest with yourself and them, I think it's bound to be good for both parties, even if you can't see that good. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. That along with remembering to breathe is kind of part of my theory of life, you know. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <Believe> me. <laughs> and I went to see Esther Hicks probably, or I think it was about twenty years ago when she still had. A long the, time ago, yeah. The video she had the videos she'd sell videos at her, you know, big sessions. Ah, okay. And I yeah. bought. I remember. I've still got this. I've got a CD DVD video thing, and on the inside, it had a little piece of paper, and it was beautiful colors, and she had a quote written on it. And I'll never forget it because she said, "If you could just do fifteen minutes of deep breathing, conscious breathing, every single day." your whole life would level out. I think she's right, yeah. And I just thought that that was so easy to overlook that, but that was so profound. And come to think about it, the way I suspect almost any meditation system is taught is uh, is probably at least partially anchored in the breath. Um, that's that's too long a tradition to have disappeared. I mean, Zen yeah. obviously we start with the breathing, um, but the, how do you say the uh, uh, the ho- hono pono? Yeah, uh, hono pono pono. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, that doesn't talk about breathing, but you got to breathe to do it. Yeah, it definitely and, helps. Uh, uh, and so that it, it we have to breathe, uh, and it's the conscious breathing I think that makes a difference. Oh, oh, I notice I'm breathing. Oh, good. Well, keep it up. You know? Yeah, like it's going to be happening whether know you're conscious or not. But there's something happens when you become, like you say, you're, you're either unconscious breathing, becoming conscious of the breath. It's, it's like you start to let go of whatever you got going on. And the other thing I've added to that recently is, um, um, is gratitude. When I, if I can remember to breathe, then I will shortly remember gratitude. And gratitude, the two together, shift me completely. Yeah. And I, I learned this because I, I'm coaching a gal um, whose initial attitude with me is I have nothing to be grateful for. Mm. And I had to tread very lightly because I had a very powerful reaction to that yeah like, what do you mean by that is what i wanted to say <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, and so i finally after we talked a while i set her up with an exercise to do three uh gratitudes i call them name three different things every day for a week yeah that she's grateful for and she's done she's done six and in, in one day seven and i'm really and I warned her the other day because she brought up some topic that's going to need more time. I said, I think I'm going to ask you to extend this gratitude business another week. Yeah. So I think she will. And she's, she's calling, she's liking it. And so it was, I needed gratitude uh, yesterday and today, yesterday in particular. Uh, and uh, I was glad she was in my life because I'm remo- teaching her that. It's who am I teaching? I'm yeah. teaching me. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah that's the fun part about coaching is it's, isn't it it's what i learn the two of us together what we learn yeah definitely i find now um you know i'll do as soon as i hop in the shower that's my 20 gratitudes before i hop out of the shower time and it's like the association with your washing everything's going down the drain anything negative you're washing it off do the 20 you hop out you're a fresh new person 
you know, you tell yourself off and you go, right, now I'm stepping into the day. I've scrubbed my mind of whatever. <laughs> scrubbed my mind, <laughs> scrubbed my back. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't done it in the shower because I've always just, uh, but I will try it just that the way you describe it. But the thing that goes on with me in the shower is, I love hot water so much. Oh. Hot water is one of God's greatest inventions, and I just wallow in the hot. And it's I happen great. to have an, inst- uh, an endless hot water heater, so I could stand under it all day. Yeah. And I've never. Ha- and that's at this cottage in the Zen Center. One of the things the Zen Center has given me is infinite hot water. <laughs> Wonderful. Look, I think it's one of those pockets of joy in the day when you stand there yeah. and you've got decent pressure from the from yeah. the thing. And you just, that's such a, a, an easy moment. Like you're saying, hot water just instantly makes you feel good. Yeah. Makes me feel good. Sure does. Yeah. Sure works. So, yeah. So, but I'll add, I'll add the uh, 20 gratitudes. Um, <laughs> or and I'll, I've got 10 fingers so I can count around <laughs> yeah. my toes as I wash my toes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. good. It's good. And what, um, within the Zen Center, do you, I mean, are you helping other people in the, in the community of the Zen Center? Do you do stuff for each other or? Well, we work, there's, um, yes, yes, and yes, but it all looks quite different. Um, there is something in Soto Zen, which comes out of Japan, and it's a pretty rigid system, and being part of Zen as it washes up on the shores of the Western United States is kind of interesting because we we do a lot of things that are J- Japanese like, and then then we draw the line and say, oh no, we Californians are going to do it this way, you know. <laughs> uh, and there's something called SAMU, S M A U, which means work uh, roughly working together, and so we always have uh, at least two. Uh, two Saturdays a month where we work on the gardens because we've got fairly extensive gardens here. Uh, and then each each person who lives here is responsible for doing three hours of volunteer work a month, okay. which is, you know, not very much really, but it's no. part of what holds it all together. Uh, National City is 10 miles south of San Diego and 10 miles north of the Mexican border. And... Um, I sometimes when I'm shopping in town, I often feel like I'm the only one who speaks only one language. Uh, and I have a little bit of Spanish, but we do offer, we do have some Spanish-speaking people who, who live here, so we offer the same meditation. We do meditation instruction every week for free uh, to anybody who wants it. And uh, now it's we offer it off and on in Spanish, so that and then we do work off and on with. Um, like with all this confusion at the border in the United States and um, um, we will go down and, and, and sit at the border and just meditate. So take our black cushions and sit. And yeah. uh, that's, um, and we also, San Diego is a big military town. We have been known to go sit uh, at military bases and just sit. There we are. And uh, and and that always feels like service, and I, it's one of those things that's very mysterious. If it helps, we have no idea that it does, because it's not, yeah. But people come to us, and uh, uh, I don't now. Once I discovered how to meditate, I don't know how many. I did some formal instruction here for a couple of years. I'm not a teacher, but I'm qualified to instruct. There's a huge. Don't worry about the difference, but. And that was great, and and I run in, it seems to me I run into I must have meditation written across my forehead because people ask me about it sometimes. So I don't know, you know. And so as a we reach out as a group and we reach out as individuals. But most of the interaction is the the growth. There's a there's a real discipline in living with other people, um, learning how to communicate, uh, learning how to tell each other the truth about bloodying each other's noses, uh, learning how to, like, what one person may think of as a clean kitchen is, you know, filthy by another person's standard, and how do you bring, how do you bring those two together when you're working together? Yeah. And all those kinds of, all those kinds, of, it's, it's, it's like marriage multiplied by lots of people, except you don't have to sleep with them all. 
uh, so, uh, yeah. but it's a, it's an opportunity for uh, like when I cut my finger, I live alone. And, uh, well, I have a roommate, but he wasn't. He works. And when I cut my finger, it was really a bad cut, and and I knew that. And uh, right at the moment, I don't have a car. Um, and I was supposed to have coffee with Alberto, and I after I got the bleeding stopped and everything, I sent a text to Alberto saying, instead of coffee, would you take me to the urgent care center? And he did, of course, and then picked me up. I mean, and I've got people I can reach out to. He lives three houses away. Yeah. Uh, that, that's that's golden. It also can drive you crazy, so it's both. Yeah. Yeah. Have you lived in a community like that before? I've lived in an alternative community where my mum lives is very much an alternative community. Okay. And uh, yeah, I mean, everybody kind of knew everybody. And like you say, it's got its pluses and then it's got its downside where everybody knows your business and all of that, which, you know, it, there's pluses and minuses to both. Right now I'm in London. I'm in the city. I don't even know my neighbors, you know? Yeah. I like that when I come here for a change and the an the anonymity. So, you know, there's yeah. two sides of the coin. There's two sides of the coin. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And, and then we do have a, we do, but we are one of the more forgiving Zen centers in, in the country. We don't require that people, we don't require that the residents meditate. We encourage it. Uh, when we have intensive meditation weekends, um, you're welcome to come to part of it. We don't require you to come to all of it. Yeah. And you'll find we are probably the least rigid of the rule-bound Zen centers in the country. I think that's true. Mm. Um, and um, thank God I ended up here because I would not have done well in some of the others, you know. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, so... Um, if you want, there, the, within Zen, it's like everything else. Everything from pretty informal right on up to very prescribed form. And yeah. we're, we're on the easy, easy does it side. Um, Lovely. I will put the link down to the center because you sent it to me via yeah. email. Yeah. And what a good um, bit of info. We've been talking for nearly an hour now. It's unbelievable. Yeah, we, I did, I'm not <laughs> timing us yet. Yeah. No, it's it's just up on Zoom. I can see it, but it's incredible how quick the time goes when you talk about this stuff that's personally interesting and has been personally helpful, you know, in our own lives. And uh, I do agree with you. Meditating with people, there's a power in it that is very different to just meditating on your own, and um, something definitely. To Although be I will say, when I have met, when I when I meditated on my own, one of the things I taught myself, and I don't know where I got this. But when I'd want to get up from the cushion, instead of staying there for the 20 minutes or whatever I was doing, I would start to think about all the people who were meditating in the world right then and begin to feel connected to them. Yes. So it didn't feel quite so solitary. So there's another tip from Anne for what it's worth. Anne. Lovely. Lovely. Uh, I had forgotten about that until you said that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, too, that's why so many of those new apps are so, you know, I, I was talking to my partner the other day and he said people like to belong and they like meditating and knowing other people are meditating at the same time. And I said, oh, why? And he said, well, he said it's just people like to connect. And I thought, well, you know, seeing, you can actually see on this app that there's, you know, 300 and 300 oh, really? 3,005 people meditating tells you where they are in the world like to me it doesn't really you know that's great. Oh, I'd like to see that post post a link to that app would you yeah it's yeah it's insight timer are you, and you can actually the great thing about the app is you can choose the music you want the length you can choose bells you can choose yeah. chimes so you can actually put together your own meditation that sounds good to your own ears yeah. which I really like that's what I use it for is um yeah piecing it together from my own preferences. I'd be curious to see. I would. I don't know that I would use it all the time, but it would be great to see no. that there were 300 other people meditating at the same yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's... Um, I'm no... <laughs> it's good. It's interesting. I mean, if you're, you know, you want to know, you know, before you start meditating on your own, you get to see, you can even see people that are meditating in your area, 
you know. It's... Oh dear, <laughs> you can stalk. You can stalk meditators. I love it. <laughs> Knock on the door. <laughs> May I join you? Yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, it's been delightful. I really yeah. enjoyed every minute of it, Agnes. Uh, Lovely. Let's dream up another reason to do this down the road. And uh, um, it's fun, isn't it? Um, it is fun. It's, it is fun. It uh, is I really fun. enjoy. I mean, I love reading the success stories when people send them in, but I especially, especially dear to me are the interviews. It's, it's, just, it's just wonderful to get to know people. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, absolutely. And I enjoy watching your interviews. So now I enjoy being interviewed. I think yes, it's great. Yes, <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> so thank you so very much. Yeah. And I will send the right. link to my yeah. coaching yeah. site, which yeah. you yeah. have. Please do. Um, Please do. And, and do you want to say goodbye to everybody before we go? Yes, I want to give them all virtual hugs. <laughs> I just feel connected to the whole planet at the moment. It's a delightful, it's a delightful feeling. Yeah. And thanks so much for sharing some time with me, all of you. Um, and I look forward to meeting you in person. No. Sounds good. No. Deep, Thank you, Anne. Deep bows Thank yep. you. You're more than welcome. Bye, Bye-bye. everybody. I'll see you in the next YouTube, and I will put all the links down below for what Anne and I discussed. And and stay on the line and we'll say goodbye in private. Bye, everyone. Okay.